Hi there. I'm Stephanie Blakey, the artist of Sorta of Sweet and Kinda Spicy, and you're listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book and graphic novel creators and supporters. I'm John Swinimer. If you want to drop me a line, you can contact me at john at truenorthcountrycomics.com. On this episode, I chat with Stephanie Blakey about Sort of Sweet and Kind of Spicy, and more at the 2022 Toronto Comic Arts Festival. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. It's also available on the True North Country Comics channel on YouTube. I invite you to like and subscribe. Stephanie is a Vancouver-based, award-winning artist who loves nerding out over comics, games, and film. Animation director and storyboard supervisor by day, she's also a comic artist by day and night too. Her early handmade comics include Autobio Collections, It Begins, You Don't Need Glasses in Heaven, Unfamiliar Cleavage, Mixed Tape, Travel Diaries, Shoroy, Ballpoint Europe, and a comic for kids, Ghost Comics. As she became more comfortable with the medium, she moved on to absurdist comedy, The Thrill of the Hunt Collections 1 and 2. She has won awards for animation, including the Audience Award at the Austin Film Festival. She was also selected as director of the inaugural Five in Focus program to lift women and non-binary creators in the animation industry, directing the animated short The Butterfly Effect, a coming-of-age story in a world populated with bugs, which won several awards, like Best Animated Short at the LA Femme Film Festival and First Place at the Florida Animation Festival. Among her other works, Stephanie will be showcasing Sort of Sweet and Kind of Spicy at TCAF. And so, without further ado, here's my chat with Stephanie Blakey about Sort of Sweet and Kind of Spicy and more at the 2022 Toronto Comic Arts Festival. So, Stephanie Blakey, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. Thank you, John. Hi. I appreciate your time. Before we get started, though, I want to ask you, what was the first comic book that you read? Oh, boy. The first comic book that I read, um, do Archie comics count? Absolutely. <laughs> Lots of people do that, for sure. Yeah, probably probably uh, just started with Archie comics and, you know, grabbing one in line at the grocery store from my mom, you know, being really cheeky about it. <laughs> um, which I, I, I did collect those for a long time, but, uh, I eventually I moved on to, uh, Sailor Moon comics when those okay. came out first mm-hmm. from, from Tokyo pop and, or mixing. And then I remember getting a, a few issues of Catwoman from a local corner store. What was it? The Catwoman, uh, the cat file run, which okay. mm-hmm. maybe I shouldn't have read as a kid, but I really liked the drawings. <laughs> Sure. I wasn't wasn't ever really a Marvel or DC kind of comic fan, but that one, I was I was very drawn to that because I hadn't seen very many women in comics when I was a kid, you know, mm-hmm. except for like Archie, you know, the Archie Betty Veronica kind of group, and and then right. Sailor Moon. So sure. kind of a kind of a mix of those. Okay, cool, cool. Well, those are good books uh, growing up, but I'm wondering who or what inspires you to create today. So. That's an interesting question. What inspires me today? <laughs> I'll give kind of a, a conflicting answer, which is I draw for myself, but I also draw for other people. And what I mean by that is I, I kind of just make what makes me laugh or what interests me. Um, anything I make, I, I'm, I'm kind of the lead audience for. That said, uh, I really, really love it when other people connect to it which I don't ever plan, you know, I, I don't really like to kind of target my work, but whenever people do kind of read my work and, and are affected by it in some positive way, that really brings me joy. So I kind of draw for myself, but love it when other people have good reactions to it too. Sure, absolutely. Are there any artists that, uh, whether past or present, that inspire you to create? Oh, for sure. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Junji Ito. Mm-hmm, I started mm-hmm. reading his work when I was very young and working at a comic shop. I was lucky enough to get his comics in there when I when I was working there and when they first came out. And as soon as I saw them, I thought, oh boy, this is one I need to follow. And so I'm I'm really glad that he's 
uh, taken off in the last few years. Very happy now. Everyone can read these rare comics that were so hard to get in the first place. Um, so I love him for uh, his horror artwork. I have started using Twitter a bit more than, than I used to, and I'm following a lot of really great comic artists there. So recently, I, I really like the work of, let's see, Ngozi, who did Check, Please, um, and Madeline Rupert, who did Robert Robert, G.C. Hull uh, from East Canada, does Starcrossed, which is a really gorgeous kind of, it's hard, it's hard to describe. <laughs> it's a really gorgeous comic with beautiful artwork and, and these amazing, this amazing set of twins who are the main characters. And then, and then a bunch of other people I follow as well that have, have recently started to influence my own work. Ah, well, it's great that you can you can find these people, you know, even outside your your own sort of city, so to speak. The internet really brings people together, so that's pretty cool. I, oh yeah, I love it. It's great. Yeah, good stuff. Well, we're talking about your exhibition at the Toronto Comic Arts Festival. So, with that in mm-hmm. mind, I'm wondering, do you have any past favorite convention moments that you can share? Oh, definitely. Actually, my kind of top con moment was at TCAF in 2019. That was the first time I attended TCAF. I've been wanting to go for years and years and years, but it was just a little bit out of the way. I'm, you know, I'm in Vancouver. It's in Toronto, mm-hmm. of course. Right. So I heard that in 2019, actually, Juji Ito was going to be there, his first North American appearance. And I thought, oh, my gosh, like, if I am going to TCAF at all, this has to be it. So I flew over, intending only really go- wanting to go for the day, just a really brief. I didn't have a lot of time to go, so I was going to make it a very brief trip. Mm. And when I got there, I did not expect that the wristbands, the tickets for the event, would be sold out so quickly. Because, <laughs> of course, everyone's going to go see Jinji Ito. And so, uh, again, I had just started using Twitter, and I had kind of put it out into the Twitter sphere you know, how, how much I wanted to see Juji Ito and, and how, you know, is, is anyone able to wait in line for me or or anyone have any extra tickets or something? And then miraculously, someone from Toronto did respond to me and say, oh, yeah, I was given a couple as a, I think, a press, you know, a couple of tickets mm-hmm. for a press person. Uh, do you want them? And I said, oh, my gosh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. And <laughs> miraculously, uh, he emailed me his tickets. So there were two of them. I didn't I didn't need to. I was there by my by my own. But as I was in line moving forward into the event where where Jinji Ito would be drawing live, I noticed a guy in line ahead of me who was talking with the uh, volunteers and he was having something wrong with his ticket. So I had two tickets. I said, hey, guy, you want to come come use my ticket? It's fine. We can go in together. And then he was thankful for that. So the two of us managed to get into Jinji Ito, which was a fantastic time. Thanks to the generosity of this guy on Twitter, just amazing. So that was probably my my best con memory so far. <laughs> That's great. It all worked out. Did you get a chance yeah. to interact with the artist at all, or you just watched what was going on? I didn't get a chance to interact with him. We got some good seats and were just able to watch him draw and uh, be interviewed by the moderator, which was which was plenty. That was great. Cool. So we're talking about the Toronto Comic Arts Festival. I'm wondering uh, if you could talk a wee bit about what you'll be showcasing, what books you'll have at your table. Sure. The books that I'll be showcasing at TCAF this year, I have a short collection of gag comics called Amateur Hour at the Dog and Pony Show, which is my second kind of anthology collection. It's a pretty short one. It's maybe 12 or 14 pages, but each comic is just a short a short kind of absurd nonsensical gag comic which is i'm i'm a big fan of making those to make myself laugh <laughs> but i'm also uh really excited to share a couple of zines that i made it's a pair and i've been working on it for the last year year and a half or so one of them's called sort of sweet and the other one's called kind of spicy and it's kind of two sides of the same coin but i've been working with a friend of mine Jennifer Sia on this kind of it's a noir crime romance comic uh and as we're working on the main story you know i'll take little breaks here and there and just draw our characters and so i've collected those drawings and those comics into two zines one of them is sort of sweet there's a little you know kind of fluffy romance and then the other one is kind of spicy which is not for children 
Uh, Mm -hmm. So please don't share that with the kids. But I'm really happy with the work I've done in both. It's something that I haven't really drawn before. It's a queer romance, which has been really kind of, I don't know, it's been really interesting working on them as I kind of am learning a little bit more about myself. So being able to channel that into a comic has been super liberating. And again, working with my friend on it has just been, it's been a ton of fun to collaborate and make something that we both really enjoy. And, you know, again, hopefully other people will enjoy it. I, I, right. Yeah. Uh, that's secondary, you know, I'm having a great time working on it. And so is she, but, you know, I'd love to share it with the world and see what they think. Hopefully they, they you know, find something that resonates with them as well. Otherwise, right. I'll be happy to keep drawing it for us. Sure. No, that's good. That's good. Now, I want to switch gears a wee bit and talk about the tools used to create your art. Wondering if you could walk me through your workflow. Sure. So the way I work on my comics, I have got like a little notepad app on my phone where I'll just throw ideas there constantly if I'm out and about or on the bus or kind of between, you know, errands or what have you. If I am hit with an idea, then I'll write it down immediately so I don't forget just in this little notepad app. And then I will scribble it out in thumbnails on paper uh, with pencil, just in a little notebook, nothing fancy. I have some of my, my thumbnails up online and they are very rough. But again, if I'm the only one looking at them to start, then I'm the only one who needs to understand them. I used to ink my comics with uh, nice black pens on Bristol paper uh, maybe about a decade ago, midnight, or plus actually, maybe 15 years ago when I first started doing kind of you know photocopied little zines for small comic events in Vancouver. But these days I do my work digitally after drawing, you know, maybe I'll do a rough sketch in my sketchbook, but then I'll take that into Photoshop is what I use. I have a Cintiq tablet that I'll use to draw it all in Photoshop. And from there, I can either share it online or prepare it for print. Ah, okay. Did you find moving to digital helped you be, let's say, get to the end quicker, so to speak, of your finished product? Or did did you have to do some learning along the way? Uh, It was pretty quick for me to go from kind of hand-drawn to digital drawings. There were, you know, a couple of bumps along the way. I remember the first time I used a Cintiq, I didn't know how to turn it on, which was very embarrassing. I think it's interesting because I do love how clean and uh, crisp the art can work digitally and how, you know, the beloved Control Z uh, as I go in and and fix things forever. But there's something really, really charming about hand-drawn kind of pencil drawings or ink drawings that... I try to keep that in my work digitally, but it's it's never quite the same. But I will say I I like the ability to meddle with my drawings digitally rather than keep erasing and drawing and erasing mm-hmm. uh, if I could just get it right online. So there are advantages and di- disadvantages to both styles. But for me, for now, digital is the way to go. And it's working out okay. <laughs> Good, good, good. Now, I was looking at your bio, and it says that you're an animation director and storyboard supervisor. So with that in mind, do you have a preference? Would you rather be making animation or comic books? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I love both so much. Yeah, I always thought it was so funny because as a kid, I loved comics and I loved animation. And I just kind of never grew up. (laughs) I I still love them both. Sure, Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, definitely kind of depends on the timing i think because drawing comics is almost an immediate result you can Mm -hmm. you can just spit out these thumbnails and then you're done and then you can you know continue fiddling with them digitally animation of course takes so so long but the end result is just mind-blowing fantastic and the ability to work with a huge group of people Normally, it's it's many, many people working in animation is so satisfying when you have everyone come together and work on something. I think currently in my position, I have a little bit more power in comics. I don't need to, you know, kind of appeal a board or anyone with that or there's no other executive decisions being made there. So I have complete control with my writing partner on on the comics that can just be made instantly almost. But with animation, it takes so long. And if you're working for someone else or on someone else's story, 
then you might not always get the input you want to give. You can, you know, normally it it is very collaborative work and you can suggest things or uh, I was very lucky on one of the shows I worked on. I was able to throw in a lot of jokes and, and uh-huh. weird little gags, which was uh-huh. kind of fun. You know, you, you can put your personality into it, but ultimately at the end of the day, it might not always be your project. Right. So I think it kind of depends on what you want to say to give a very, a very long rambling answer. <laughs> Did I even answer it? Oh my gosh. Well, I think it depends. I think what I'm getting out of it is it depends on the project. And, and and I have heard from others, like they say, sometimes having too many people, like too many cooks in the kitchen can sometimes spoil it for you where you're not mm. the boss, right? But, yeah. but I'm glad that you've been able to find these projects that you can be collaborative and have the input to find that it's a rewarding project overall. So that's good. Good to hear. De- good to hear. Definitely. Thank you very much. It, yeah, <laughs> they, they, can, they can be a lot of fun. Sure. Um, <laughs> it's good. So uh, we've talked about your books that you'll have at TCAF. I'm wondering, do you have any other up and coming projects that you can talk about? Uh, sure. Upcoming projects. I am the kind of person who has a ton of stuff on the go constantly, um, for better or for worse. I have my my kind of, you know, what's that saying? You have something on the back burner, right? Well, mm-hmm. my uh, I have a Kafka-esque kitchen just full of back burners. <laughs> Wow, it's ridiculous, and each one's got a got an idea on it. Hopefully, none of them are bubbling over. But uh, <laughs> for the kind of immediate future, the ones the projects that I'm working on currently, let's see, yeah, definitely this kind of crime romance comic uh, that I'm working on. I am working on a pitch for a TV show that we will see what happens with that um, for for me to direct which I'm really excited about, but of course is totally secret, unfortunately. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll gush about it in a couple of years, hopefully. <laughs> I would like to do a short comic about the human feet that were found on the shore of Vancouver and the Pacific Northwest uh, of the kind of area in general. I don't know if you remember this. No. Um, oh, it was it was huge in the news, at least here in Vancouver, where I think it was in the kind of early 2000s, maybe 2010-ish where feet were found on the beaches kind of over the course of several years. Every once in a while, they would float up and and scare hikers and beachgoers. Wow. Uh, and, and there was a huge investigation into it. And, and people were wondering, what you know, what's going on? What is this? Is this some kind of gang initiation or something? What Who, mm. who, who, do, who do these feet belong to? Yeah. Uh, it's, I won't, you know, I won't spoil it. And it is very tragic and weird, but mm-hmm. it was just such such an odd event and something that uh, myself and my friends were just talking about a lot because how, how odd is that? So I'd like to make a zine about it. I have a, a terrible title in mind called a few feet from the shore. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry um, for groaning. <laughs> <laughs> no, see this is, anyway, <laughs> I, yeah. I'm sorry for joking about it. So we'll, we'll see how that one goes, but I'd like to, I'd like to talk about that and kind of how we felt about it. Right. I wanted to ask you also if you'll be attending any other conventions or festivals this year beyond TCAF. I'm definitely going to be at another Vancouver convention. Uh, I think it's called Anime Revolution. There's two here. There's Anime Evolution and Anime Revolution. I believe I'll be at Revolution, which is normally a big anime convention. And I I make a lot of uh, paper illustrations. And so I mm-hmm. like to share those and sell prints and show off my work in person it's just so much nicer to see them in person uh than online but i have also started looking into the small press expo which i think would be really cool to go to i'm a little i don't know how comfortable i am quite traveling cross border or outside of canada just yet so i'll need to look into a little bit more of kind of the safety and and precautions going on at small press expo but that's also been one that I have been wanting to go to for years and years. And uh, I believe they have opened up again this year. So maybe I'll look into that one. Yeah, I hope so. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, (laughs) sounds good. Sounds good. Do you have a website where you recommend people go to find out about your current and your future projects, including your travel? I mostly update my Twitter account, which is at Manifest Stephanie, which you can also find on my website, which is stephblakey.com, S-T-E-P-H-B-L-A-K-E-Y, just one L. Uh, so you can go there and, and find my Twitter and find my Instagram. 
um, and info about what I'm up to over there. And uh, yeah, just kind of see, find me on Twitter where I'll be posting a lot of nonsense and, and events and things. Sounds good. Well, Stephanie, those are all the questions I have for you, but I'm wondering, is there something I didn't ask that you'd like to get across in this interview? I think maybe just maybe just going back to being genuine with your art. Like I said before, I'm I'm kind of drawing for myself. I love it when people do that. There is temptation there to kind of go with the trends or or make what's popular and stuff like that, but I find that work to be quite cold personally. But I love it when people tell their genuine stories and kind of reveal themselves in some way. I'm more interested in learning about you than what the rest of the world likes. So I, I would love to see more of that. I know there's a lot out there and I know I'll, you know, I'm so excited to see the comics and art that people are going to be, you know, bringing to these events. But I would just, I would just say that is to kind of, you know, I I love it when people are more genuine about their work and, and honest with it. So maybe I'll leave it at that. Thanks to Stephanie for the chat. You can discover more about Stephanie on Twitter at ManifestStephanie and online at StephBlakey.com. That's S-T-E-P-H-B-L-A-K-E-Y. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts. And please leave a good rating. Also check out the TrueNorthCountryComics.com website and follow along on Twitter at TrueNorthComics. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel and hit the notification button. Please send your feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks again for listening and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. True North Country Comics podcast is copyright True North Country Comics, copyright 2022.